Welcome back, or welcome to Cheese Press Publishing. So many of you in the comment sections have asked how uh, to study, or what is the best way to study. And I'm here to help you out. Before we get into it though, I need to address something. Learning styles. This is kind of a hot topic in the educational community, and people are quite passionate about it. First I'm going to say, learning styles aren't as important as they need to be. Now. Hold your comments for two seconds and let me explain before you go letting me know how you feel about this. I'm not saying learning styles don't exist. I'm just saying that they're not permanent, not tied to you, your biology, and who you are. Just because you've been told you were an auditory learner by your third grade teacher and your mother doesn't mean you're actually an auditory learner. You might have just been that day. This can change. And just because your mother, father, parent, wonderful person who raised you was told in third grade they're a visual learner doesn't mean they are now have always been and they may have just been a visual learner that day we will discuss three major things in this video going forward one well what is studying two good study habits and three you're gonna get all my hot takes and my wife can edit me out and post thanks honey i'm henry science and math teacher at hazelwood prep and my wife made me do this What is studying? Studying, by Webster's Dictionary, says a state of contemplation or an application of mental faculties to the acquisition of knowledge. So we're going to utilize this definition to break down what studying is. Studying at its core is the acquisition of information or knowledge and applying it is the goal. Now, usually, studying is used in more of a condescending or quasi-consequential term, whereas studying is the punishment, not the goal. It's looked down upon like you're some nerd. But those of you who enjoy, like, trading card games, Dungeons & Dragons, playing sports, you might actually be studying those thousands of cards, the PHB, this hundreds or even thousands of plays you have memorized and can just look at on the field and know what's going on. You kind of amaze me personally because I don't get it. Those of you really, really, really study hard for that and you might not even realize it. It's really not as hard as you think it is. In actuality, you just have to figure out what forms of studying engage your brain. I mean, you're the ones here, aren't you? All of you who just said, man, I can't study. I don't study well. Well, don't get your panties in a wad yet. Let me ask you a couple questions. One, what do you do in your spare time? How do you learn all the things you know? Did you actually just spend 200 hours playing Pokemon, running around and catching balls? Did you memorize the Pokedex? Did you really go and memorize that book of plays your football coach taught you? Maybe before or after he hit you in the head. That's a different story, though. These are different ways of learning, of studying. And it's something you might be passionate about. And that's awesome. Now, let's, let's move to academics. Because that's a setting I know all of you just love so much. Now, developing healthy study habits and what are study habits to begin with? You know, your first question, how do study habits relate to Pokemon or football or you know, whatever else you do to have fun? What you do for fun engages your brain in a more intense and deeper matter because you enjoy it. That's how it works, right? Now, academically, you probably don't care. That's okay. Here's the problem. You gotta get to high school or college. Post-college, if you happen to be just one of those such lucky peoples. Yay. 
those study habits I just mentioned, there if you go to Google, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of different ways to learn. You're gonna get all those results in you know a couple, two tenths of a second, maybe millions of hits. That's awesome. How are we gonna use those couple of million hits to actually help you learn something? Well, let's figure out what works for you. It's the hard part. What engages your brain? What helps you do so? What makes you have fun? The answers to these questions actually going to have a better way of helping you study than you think because it's going to make studying fun yes have fun studying please have fun studying you must have fun studying it's better for you to have fun while you're studying because you're going to retain the information better so when that test comes inevitably and there's this really rude question that your teacher just happened to write down and it happened to be about a lithographic image in the bottom corner of the extended edition of War and Peace that you totally read the night before and didn't just use the Spark or Cliff Notes. I mean, I know you didn't. You know you didn't. The teacher now knows you didn't. How'd that actually go for you? Did you really get a good grade on that test? This is why having some fun with studying is important, so that you can utilize various methods and forms of studying to actually help you. Because the whole point of this is you. You're important. Your success is important. And I want you to succeed. Even though I'm sitting here on the other side of this camera making a YouTube video. Sorry, sorry, my, my wife's getting me the side eye. She made me do this. Let's talk about some practical habits and resources you can use to actually get some study done. And we're going to have to talk about this by subject. Because I'm not going to expect you to use the same study you use for literature, comprehension, and spelling as you do to figure out what the area is underneath the graph and calculus. It's just not going to work the same. So, let's just start with math. Because I know all of you just love math. It's your favorite subject, right? Studying math can be really simple. I mean, third grade, you learn your multiplication tables. Cool, just make some flashcards. Be done with it all. Hit up one of those timetable pushy things. Great. Okay, you grow up a couple of years. You hit middle school. You learn this thing called algebra. You start doing graphing. Oh no, so scary. At this point, simple YouTube videos or a math platform like Duolingo Math or Khan Academy can be incredibly helpful. That can be your studying. And they actually turn it into kind of a game. But that isn't all that there is to studying. Like, let's take English. I know all of you love English. Let's take Shakespeare. Comprehension. Reading. We'll start with Macbeth, because I happen to remember that one. A great way to study Macbeth would be to take the original version. Yes, I know it's an older English. It's okay, you'll survive, it just takes a little getting used to. Read the first scene, act one, scene one. Write a synopsis, like three, four sentences, paragraph, something like that. Compare it against the synopsis from a third party for that specific part. See how it compares. Look, you're studying. Really wasn't that bad, promise. The whole goal here is to spend a little bit of time every day so that you don't have to spend like eight hours or two days before the test so you panic. This will help engage the long-term memory of your brain, okay? That's the whole goal of this. I'm about to get into a bunch of other different ways to study. But the habit you want to build is a long-term storing of the information. It's not gonna do you much good if you can only remember for like 10 minutes. That's not gonna help you 50 minutes into a test. It's only gonna help you for about the first 10 or 15, then you're gonna just cry yourself for the rest of the test. I'm not saying I'm speaking for experience. We'll get to, the, we'll get to that in a minute. Now, some of you out there are just gonna be like, Mr. Henry, why are you rambling so much? Just just give me the facts. I want the facts as they are. Fine. I get that. I got you. A couple of things. Really easy to do. And no, this is not some magic formula. Start with like Quizlet or some online flashcard thing. Make some. Steal from, from your friends or from someone else. There's literally millions of different flashcard sets out there. You can probably already find one. They have games built into it. Turn it into a game. Have fun with it. I, I realize it's not going to be the, the funnest game ever, but it's better than nothing. Now, some of you who are a little old school, maybe get really distracted really quickly on an electronic device. Old flash and note cards. Those three by five cards you see at Walmart for 50 cents a pack. Okay, a dollar a pack now, but that's a different story. This is an excellent way to use flashcards in a not so distracting manner. Also, you have to make them yourself. And science has shown that you're much more likely to remember something if you write it down. That's why taking notes in class is so emphasized, especially when you hit the collegiate level. Speaking of the collegiate level, group studying. Great way. Get together with your friends, classmates, 
parents at home, the, the wonderful homeschoolers. Build a quiz, build a test yourself. Think of questions like, if the teacher really asked this question right now, I'd be screwed. Okay, figure out the answer. Please figure out the answer. Because guess what? As the teacher, I've already written that question to the test. Sorry, you're gonna have to answer it anyway. You might as well get it right. The ultimate goal of different forms of studying and these different tools is just to help you. Ultimately, at the end of the day, studying is just work. And you gotta be willing to put in the work to make the difference. And then the third thing I promised you, some hot takes. Get ready, darling. You might have to do some cutting. Now, in my personal experience, I didn't have to study in high school. I didn't at all. Um, like, I was that guy who studied the 10 minute transmission before the thing, got a 95 on the test and called it a day. That's, that was me. Uh, college, I did pretty much the same thing. Those of you who are familiar enough with chemistry and know what organic chemistry is, I didn't study for O-Chem. I didn't. I got through organic chemistry and didn't study. I'm sorry, I broke the curve too. No. Those of you who barely got through high school chemistry, don't worry about this, and you'd probably cry looking at a single thing from that class. It's okay. But I later learned how to study. It was actually Biochem 4300. <laughs> That's when I figured out I didn't know how to study. And I had to learn. And studying takes time. Learning to study is, is difficult. Things that work for myself, like making those old flashy flashcards, because I didn't quite get the whole Quizlet thing helped, but I always got distracted with, I don't know, Balloon's Tower Defense or something like that on my phone. It doesn't really help if you don't retain the information. Group studying was the biggest thing to help me, really was. And at that time, I was also tutoring for the university I was at. Doing that, I learned a lot of study tools, like what I mentioned earlier. Just studying 15 minutes a day for a class. It's better to just review the notes, maybe rewrite them, re-listen to part of the lecture if you recorded it. That kind of thing moves what you learn from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. And that's what you need in studying. Now, the largest people I tutored in the in the academic sphere was student athletes, the people who were there on scholarship and who honestly didn't necessarily care about their academics. They were there because they wanted to play their sport. And I helped them because the NCA people, whoever the, the, the National Collegiate Sports Association people, they needed them to have a specific GPA. Now, this whole prospect opened my eyes to not just studying, but effective studying. It's one thing to, like I said, spend 15 minutes or an hour versus eight hours or 16 hours in a day, just so you can get to the test and forget everything and cry. A great thing, a great study method, something I use personally all the time. You know, I take 30 minutes, set a timer, 30 minutes, and then I study for that time. Put my phone away from me to if i need the computer i'll keep it but just set the distraction to the side the stuff you don't need spend that 30 minutes studying and then spend five minutes when that timer goes up set another timer five minutes do whatever you want watch a youtube video play a video game i don't know boot up counter-strike or cod or something like that have fun and then go back to studying after that time passes it's all about you and at the end of the day i just want you to succeed so if you found this helpful or if you have other questions leave them down in the comments give us your feedback and maybe just maybe, my wife will make me sit down here and do this again. Until then, enjoy learning something new. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, let us know in the comment section right down below. And if you please like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an update from us. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.